当中亦都。It is the appointed time. Let us get started. 环节咁就而家先请团体代表同埋官员。Shall we invite the deputations and also the administration to come in? I'd like to remind deputations that if you find it necessary, you can use the earphones and also the microphone. Channel one is floor channel. Uh, channel zero is floor. Channel one is Chinese, and channel two is English. Everyone will have three minutes. But I'd like to remind you that your oral representation and submissions will not be exempted or. Protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance, and also whether you are attending the meeting or whether you are in the public gallery, please avail yourselves to the security measures, and、uh, I will be implementing them strictly. The security measures guide have been sent to you, and、uh, also it is placed.、Um, In front of you, if necessary, you can get a copy from the security staff. Also, after you have spoken, please give your submission, if any, to the clerk、uh, for our future reference. Now, I will call upon the deputations to speak one by one, and then the officials will respond. First of all, Mr. Chai Man Hon, Madam Chairman. In rebuilding Wafu Estate, you. Say it's a major project. In 2014, the policy address spent a lot of、uh, coverage on it, saying that there will be an a, an additional 10,000 units, and in the end, there will be 20,000 units. You give people the impression that you have the stamina, that it is for the long term. But then one year has passed, and nothing has been done. We have just seen. Some basic allocation by Legco to do basic studies to see how the redevelopment can take place. So I think the administration has not done a lot, and the blame should not be on civil servants, but on the C Y Leung administration. You should have done more groundwork before you announce it, but then you always. Want to make big claims, and you tell people that you have a good report card to show them. But in the end, people are disappointed. You have disappointed people, and people are losing confidence in the administration. Therefore, today we have to discuss how we can have more housing supply in the long term. I would say you better. Deliver your promises first. Let us make a checklist of how much you have really done after you have promised to do something. The previous terms of government was more or were more orderly in their work. They would do things step by step. They would announce things step by step. Usually, there will be a lead time of five years before we can have redevelopment started. But let us see what is happening. You don't even know the objective, and yet you announce projects, and at the same time you do not give us a plan, a timetable for implementation. In other words, you are just cheating the public. You give people false hopes, and people who are, for example, in Wafu Estate, may be pondering what they should do if there is redevelopment, but then they cannot make plans because you actually. Um, are only making big claims. I will tell C Y Leung if you want to do it, do it now. If you have announced it and you don't do it, people will be waiting and waiting, and yet you show them no progress. We also hope that 
uh, pro-establishment members must also urge the administration to do it quickly. You are the ruling party, let's say. I hope you will take my advice. Thank you. Next, Ms. Chang Lok Lam. Good afternoon, our Chairman. I would make three points. First of all, there is a high vacancy rate in PRH. According to the Housing Department, at the end of September last year, there are about 740,000 PRH units and about 10,000 are vacant, meaning 1.3%. In other words, there is one vacant unit every 80 PRH units. And yet there are people who do not have housing. There are people who have to shoulder exorbitant rents, and there are people in subdivided units without any protection for their life and limb. So why are you keeping vacant units in PRH? Why don't you do something as soon as possible? At the same time, there is this problem. Uh, we do not have enough workers. There is also slow progress in renovating the units. So. Families have to wait and wait before being given a unit. Let us look at Singapore. They have imported labor to boost efficiency. In fact, the construction industry lacks about 10,000 pairs of hands. And with the surge in wages, will you now implement importation of labor so you help citizens and at the same time you will be given some help? And also, you say you will provide 480,000 units in the next 10 years. And we see a longer and longer waiting time for PRH. Information shows that normally, uh, usually, there are 130,000 people waiting, and the waiting time usually exceeds three years. Why is that so? I think there is the problem of double tenancy. And at the same time, there is also long-term occupation of PRH units by well-off tenants. The housing department should optimize the coordination mechanism if there are uh, family disputes or divorce, etc. You should do something about the households concerned. Number three, there is a short supply of land. And uh, since we are faced with this, you, you told us that you have many ways to deal with it. But then all those would uh, require a lead time of 8 to 10 years or even longer. And during that time, people still have to have housing. So why don't you do something for people who are in dire straits, especially those in subdivided units? You should do more to face the problem. Next, Mr. Ng Chung Tat. Thank you. I represent um, poor people living in NT West. I have to declare my interest. I live in public housing, but I am not waiting for a separate unit. Uh, it is not because I have high aspirations. Uh, it is because I cannot see any way out. You have got a new qu quotas and Q and P system and points system, and yet uh, you deduct points for young people, and uh, I don't think we can get a PRH even if we wait 30 years. Mr. Chen Chan Pan said, uh, "If we wait for PRH, it is because we are giving up on ourselves." I don't think so. I know that today we are talking about PRH. I don't want to really talk about high inflation, low wages, etc., etc. I will not digress. Um, there was this couple reported in newspapers saying that they have to save up every penny to buy PRH. They uh, would like to buy um, some housing so they can have a roof over their heads. But then housing is a basic human right. Why do Hong Kong people have to toil in order to have housing? Um, the older generation may say, look at us, we did that ourselves. We saved up money and then we had housing. But uh, let us look at the uh, very ancient times. People used to hunt for the meat they eat. Then why are you going to supermarket to buy frozen meat? Why don't you go and hunt in the forest? It is because times have changed. I have seen um, 
the Facebook response saying that um, the FS have, has said, if you can't afford it, don't buy housing. Well, if we buy private housing, we won't have money. If we want to queue up for PRH, uh, we are useless young people. If you live in a tent, you are in the Occupy movement and uh, you collude with overseas forces. This is what we are labeled with. And then I heard this on radio that a 40-year-old woman had been waiting for PRH and then she is not earning enough to rent private housing. I definitely understand her, but I don't know how to help her. And then, um, of course, I also felt very bad because that's the policy of the Hong Kong administration. The middle-aged people who are poor have worked half for half of their lives um, and earn very little. And yes, I have graduated. I have always been forthcoming in giving my views to the government. I'd like to tell you a piece of my mind. Uh, we have policy advocacies, but I don't know and I don't think you are going to listen to us. Thank you. Your time is up. Mr. Lai Ming Lai. Thank you, Chairman. I'm here today. Um, of course, I understand the um, purpose of this meeting, and that is the LTHS and also response to the 2015 public policy address. But then we don't see the Secretary for Transport and Housing here. This is actually a hearing for officials to listen to the average member of the public for their views on the long-term housing strategy. But we only have the permanent secretary and the director of housing, Mr. Ying, here without the secretary here. I'm very much angered by this. Well, I agree with um, what my friend said, uh, who, who is sitting beside me. And I also like to respond to what Ms. Zhang said. She said a lot about well-off tenants. The government is saying we have an aging population and we have to do this and that for elderly people. But what about the well-off tenant policy? You are driving away young people who can take care of elderly people, then who are going to take care of the elderly people? And also, where do you expect the young people to go? Are you telling us to rent subdivided flats with hefty rents paid. You have to think about this. And also, the policy address mentions so-called initiatives, including allowing green form applicants to buy new PRH and also allowing white form applicants to buy HOS without paying premium. I think what you are trying to do is to sell off public housing you are actually propping up the market just like the developers. This is because when you build more PRH, fewer people might buy from the private market. And what do you do in return? You will compel people to buy in the private market uh, through the well of tenant policy. In other words, if you have a little more money in your hands, you have to buy property or you pay hefty rent in the private market. I like to say that many singleton young people, they graduate from university and then they are already heavily indebted because they borrowed uh, the school fees. And then they would not have a chance to save up any money. But the well-off tenancy policy only looks at income. And this is unfair to PRH tenants. And I was talking about you propping up the market. Right now, sorry, your time is up. Next, Mr. Ng Kalun. Thank you, Chairman. I represent the Subdivided Flats Youth Support Rent Control Block. You don't want to implement rent control. Um, but I think uh, this is because your research is outdated and you are prejudiced. I have five points to make. Number one, land is not about a private market. You monopolize the land market as the government. And then when housing is built, you say 
it should be a free market. I think this is totally wrong. Secondly, housing is a human right. Hong Kong is not a party. To the ICCPR, but in the confident it is stated that people have the right to um, accommodation. This is the government's basic responsibilities. So, when you look at tenants' rights and the landlord's right to make money, the government should uh, prioritize um, the people's. Right. You cannot say that you have to safeguard the landlord's right to make money. That's why um, the tenants have to be disadvantaged. And also in the government's long-term housing policy strategy, um, it says that it's not going to impose uh, rental control, etc. But how about controlling the increase um, of rents? Then you won't be imposing too much control, and also some. Or maybe you can legislate so that when landlords um, do the maintenance afterwards, they can uh, rent out their flat at a higher rate. So um, that would become an incentive for landlords to better the. Flats and also for landlords, um, of course, they do not want to see rental control. But SDU itself is unlawful, and many SDUs are now even um, built in industrial buildings. The government should uh, step up its law enforcement; otherwise, you are putting the cart before the horse. And you are asking people to uh, forge consensus. I think this is absurd. The government knows the um, housing price is soaring, and it tries to implement a number of measures. But all this would affect the interest of landlords. If you want everybody to have a consensus, then we do not even need a government. Next, Mr. Yeo Koi. I am very concerned about housing for Hong Kong people. Now, this has been a very uh, painful issue for Hong Kong people. Lately, I have seen a survey, and Hong Kong's um, housing price is as much as 70 times of people's median income. And Hong Kong has become the most expensive city in the world. How come this problem has never been resolved? The government always says that um, increasing supply is the best solution. However, the government has brushed aside a basic problem. It is not only about the supply. The demand is huge in Hong Kong. As for the demand, I'm not just talking about housing um, demand. It's because people are speculating in the property market. And now um, housing has become a commodity. It's just not just for people's accommodation. People are now uh, speculating in this market so then they can make huge profits. And there's no limits, no constraints, even though the supply Goes up, the demand will even go higher. So, without any restrictions, there will be three bad consequences. First, Hong Kong people will be turned into housing slaves. Uh, uh, Grassrooters would have to suffer high rental, and um, Hong Kong society will be ruined. And if you don't control speculation, then people will be uh, profiteering, and they don't even have to work. They will not be making contribution to Hong Kong, and Hong Kong's economy will be undermined. People are now pursuing the wrong things. The government just wants private developers to build more units, and it is not doing anything to property market speculation. The government should do more to tackle these problems. Otherwise, people will become greedier. So for the greedy speculators, you should impose a heavy tax on them. This will allow the government to um, control public finance better. Although the government has implemented uh, th three 
um, cooling measures, but I don't think they can really solve the problem. I think um, you should impose a property value increase tax and also uh, vacancy a vacant property tax should be imposed to discourage flat hoarding. Speculation should be clamped down on, otherwise there may be a property bubble in Hong Kong. Thank you. Next, Mr. Tang Ka Heng. I opposed to the government's present policy. The government says that now it's going to set up a housing reserve with $20 billion. However, with this amount of money, it cannot solve the housing problem at the moment, and it just creates a false hope for people. So I'm really disappointed in the government. As for PRH, well, it provides um, housing opportunities for uh, people. Uh, grassroots people can pay a lower rent and lead a stable life. The government knows that Hong Kong people are living in poorer and poorer environments. Many of them have to live in SDUs and they have to pay high rents. However, the government doesn't want to waste its lens on PLH because it can sell the um, sites at a very high price. So the government just ignores the need of uh, poor young people. Um, the FS in his blog once said that um, he is now setting the house, setting up the, setting up the housing reserve because he wants um, the housing situation in Hong Kong to be bettered. The government should really review the whole issue because the core value in Hong Kong now is just money. Um, the government's expenditures in all areas will um, go up, so the housing problem must be resolved now. Our government has not been doing adequately for housing, so that's why Hong Kong people are under huge pressure. The rent is very high, and when people have to pay mortgage, they are shouldering a huge burden. If you want to wait for PLH, your waiting time is very long. And the means test is very harsh. So um, how can people still raise kids? How can people get married? If you really want to solve the aging problem in Hong Kong, you have to build a huge number of housing units so that uh, people will be able to afford their accommodations. And that is the true solution uh, for an aging society. And the um, housing reserve should uh, be invested, but you are now totally relying on this. That is now people's um, future housing is hinged on the investment return of the housing reserve. So we object to this, and we think the housing authority should be doing a better job. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chang Ying. Well, I'm very concerned about how people making money from housing. I would like to ask a question. So uh, for housing, is it for accommodation or is it for um, speculation? Well, people now buy flats and rent them out to make money. Uh, a lot of people will tell you um, how many percents you can make by doing this. So you can see that now Hong Kong people are turning a lot of importance to um, investing in properties. The rental is so high in Hong Kong, and now all Hong Kong people view uh, the properties as an investment. Uh, many uh, units are sold as an investment tool. For example, um, there is this uh, luxury flat um, at mid levels. Most of the units are bought for investments. So the uh, property developers are selling such units for investments only, and nobody lives in them. Property developers are profiteering. This market is not working, and housing has become a commodity. It's not 
built for people's accommodation. And now, probably price um, has been made so high. Have you ever imagined how tenants are treated uh, unfairly? And then, in the industrial building in Chinwan, um, all the tenants um, of the SDUs are evicted from their homes in one day. And also, for the SDU tenants, they are overcharged by the landlords when it comes to electricity bills and water bills. So how come the government doesn't do anything about it? How come the government does not regulate the SDU owners? Is the government only protecting the interests of the landlords? Has it ever thought about the interests of the tenants? How come no measure is in place to control rental? I hope co uh, rental control can immediately be implemented. Uh, rental control uh, can um, rein in people's uh, activities of buying flats for uh, making profits. And now a lot of people are forced out of their homes or shops because the landlords just want to make more money. If in order to solve that problem, I think a vacant property tax should be imposed and the Units can really be used by people. Thank you. Next, Ms. Lau Siu Mei. Many people uh, um, said that the upcirculation of BLH units should be uh, quickened and the supply of housing should be increased. But we are all talking about supply. However, when you talk about the private property market or property developers' interest, it seems that uh, we can't even talk about it. Professor Anthony Chung, on the 20th of January, when he talked to the uh, press, he talked about a new concept that is social housing. I don't know what's the definition of social housing. Sec the secretary said that he has to make use of um, private companies' uh, power so that more units can be provided. He has also cited some overseas examples, uh, for example, integrated development. Well, I would like to ask. This question is it true that all people have to buy their own property? Well, the secretary has always talked about supply led, but the percentage is low. I don't see the government doing a good job in housing production. And you are encouraging people to buy pro to buy properties, but I have three questions. Now, first of all, what is def the definition of social housing? I am sure Professor Chung knows this very well. It's not just about acquisition of properties. Um, there should be there are also other factors, for example, uh, protection of people's rights to housing, etc. So, if you just use a new term, then it doesn't solve the problem. The grassrooters, the young people, the middle class are all suffering from this housing problem. That is, there's no affordable housing in the market. Well, the LTHS stresses uh, a progressive housing ladder. Do we always have to talk about upward mobility? It's not true that everyone wants to live in a luxury flat. We just want to have stable accommodation. We want affordable accommodation, and that would be quite enough for Hong Kong people. So how come you are forcing us to uh, move upward? Why do you want to force us to buy expensive flats? And why um, is the policy inclined to us uh, property developers? Would property developers refrain from making money? Of course not. They would not be building affordable flats if they are not forced to. So social housing would only become a new commodity, and this will not solve the housing problem in Hong Kong. The government should think out of the box and develop a new type of property which cannot be speculated on. And Professor Chung said that he would listen to uh, the voices of stakeholders. Well, for us, for people like us who are living in these um, units, we are the stakeholders. Next, Mr. Tong Yu Kang. I am a representative of No Flat Slaves. We have always stressed that um, housing is not a commodity; it's a basic human rights. Everybody should be entitled um, to 
proper accommodation. Uh, uh, some other representatives have uh, made this very clear. What is housing for? Is it for accommodation or for speculation? Well, housing is for uh, accommodation. We just want to live in a proper uh, unit. However, uh, we think the government is going in a, in a wrong direction. You are consolidating property and financial hegemony, but the public and young people have to live in more expensive, more distant, and also smaller accommodation. If you are still gravitated towards finances and property development, the situation will just deteriorate. I'd like to give you a figure. Until the end of last year, the outstanding mortgage loan stands at over $900 billion, and that would mean 43.8% of our GDP. In other words, if the banks suddenly uh, call back the loans, then uh, we will have to pay half of our salary to settle the loans. In other words, this is a society that relies on loans to propel productivity. This is very unhealthy. And if the bubble bursts, the most poor will stand to lose the most. However, the LTHS uh, provides no solution. You call it a housing ladder, but you continue to force young people and uh, the grassroots to buy private housing, or else you won't have the Q&P system. You won't also have the well-off tenancy mechanism. In other words, you are forcing everybody to think of buying private housing. That is why you are the um, culprit of making livelihood a commodity. You, in fact, allow the MTR to also buy property overseas. And this is of high risk. And if uh, there is a loss to be incurred, there will be fewer housing produced in Hong Kong. So we want to reflect on why you always want people to buy property. Do we have alternative housing, including cooperative housing, social housing? We have had that before. And also, we have a, a few aspirations that has been distributed to members. We should not have the Q&P system for young singletons. There should not be well-off tenant policy. There should be more private uh, or pro PRH built. And also, in the end, we should have social housing. Next one, Mr. Wong King Lai. Thank you. We are the platform concerning subdivided flats and issues in Hong Kong. I'd like to respond to the LTHS, and we are going to concentrate on the URA. The government should buy up the land resumed by the URA, and also there should be land exchange to increase land supply in urban areas. The analysis of the URA position is such that uh, there should be more land supply through the supply and demand mechanism. But then we doubt how much the URA can do and whether the URA is really helping grassroots. I will look at I will now look at some data of the URA. Even if we can't say that the URA is the culprit of unaffordable housing, I believe it has a certain responsibility in decreasing supply. In 2009 until 2015, the URA announced 18 projects, and there are 1,600 titles that are affected, and 2,800 households are affected. Uh, th those are all the data from the URA. We don't know more. We don't know the details. So, Chairman, if you think what we are saying today is not detailed enough, please ask the URA to release more data, and also. It concentrates in uh, the old districts in Kowloon, Hong Ha Ma Chao Kok, Sham Shui Po, Tai Kok Chui Mong, Kok Yang Ma Te. This is the core area of Kowloon, and the URA is affecting many um, people. According to social workers, we understand that the landowners will not sell their flats once a project is announced. In other words, in the past five years, the URA has frozen a lot of units in the old districts in Kowloon. So there is a sudden decrease in supply. And also, let us look at the RNVD data. In the past five years, uh, let us look at the units demolished 
in the urban area. That takes up 99% of all demolished units in the entire territory, 47% in Kowloon. And if we look at smaller units in Kowloon, and if you look at uh, units uh, smaller than 70 meters square, uh, they take up 30% of all demolished units. In other words, there is a big decrease of small units uh, in the supply of big, uh, small units in Kowloon. Therefore, the URA is uh, really freezing a lot of units in the old urban area. Some people say the URA has to be self-sufficient, but all these years, it has made a profit of over $10 billion, especially um, in 2003 and 2008 when we had financial crises. So it has a big profit. Next, Mr. Martin Deek. Dear Mr. Chairman, Mrs. Chairman, we are meeting here with more than 100 speakers listed to share their views on our public housing policy on Saturday. But yet, if you walk in the streets of Hong Kong, it is very, very rare to come across the homeless. So I ask, why is this then such a pressing issue? It is so mainly because what we are here today sharing our views on is our future. Many young individuals and couples are currently in a tough position trying to gain, gain firm ground under their feet, trying to gain stability to start their families. The problem is that while they are looking at the doors of public units from the outside, inside there are people like Lang Kwak Hong, long hair earning $90,000 per month. Many like him are shamelessly and immorally abusing our publicly funded flats. How did we come to tolerate this? The truth is that over the decades your centrally planned housing policies entirely missed their original goal. Multiple gov governmental housing schemes deviated to the point when they breed self-seeking and lazing about, when they encourage cheating and abuse and are corrupt by nature. It is no exaggeration to claim today that every person in Hong Kong knows someone who immorally abuses so much scarce housing units at the expense of those who really need them. This must be stopped. The Lion Rock Institute wants you to make public housing what, is, what it was intended to be at the first place. We must ensure efficient circulation. We must accommodate the poor ones and urge the rich ones to find accommodation at the open market. We demand annual declarations of income and all assets of all tenants. We demand employment of available face and object recognition technology in all publicly funded apartment blocks. Individuals not on tenant lists must be moved out. Flats being used as storage must be cleared out. All units currently used for other purpose than primary accommodation must be made vacant. And finally, the ones who choose to continue to abuse scarce housing resources must be sent to jail. We want you to bring about the efficiency and just allocation in public housing. All rich ones must be moved out. You can start with Long Kwak Hong. Thank you. Mr. Wang Ching Fong, thank you. The Democratic Party thinks that the LTHS is empty in its promises, but it is not capable. It says that in the next 10 years, the government knows that it cannot satisfy all the demand. And there is a shortfall of 40,000 units. And even so, you promise that you will build 250,000 units. But in fact, even if you want to rezone land, you have to go through the town planning board process. The DP is worried that now you have low popularity and also um, how you performed in rezoning land in the past. We don't think we have confidence in you at all. In the report, you don't promote any policies to increase the supply of rented housing. We are disappointed with it. We want to change your policy mindset. However, the TH Bureau is not willing to relax the restrictions on the sale of HOS. Then owners cannot rent out part of their HOS unit before paying premium. We hope you can have rent control so that you can buy time to make up the shortfall in supply. We think that uh, you should study into the proposal to allow 
green form applicants to buy new PRH. We believe it will help the circulation of PRH. But at the same time, we would ask you to allow the same owners to rent out their units after a certain period of time, or else uh, some years down the road, there will again be the problem of vacant PRH units. As for inviting the um, housing cooperative and the housing society and also URA to produce uh, sub subsidized sale units, we subscribe to it. You also say that household income uh, which is below 60,000 should be given the chance to buy such subsidized sale flats. We agree with it because it will help the sandwich class to own property. However, we are also worried that this will only supply more housing in the short term. Uh, this is just a short term measure, so you would seem to be delivering your promise. But we believe the grassroots should be more taken care of. Thank you. Next, Ms. Tai Yu Ching. Thank you, Chairman. I'm from the concern group um, of SDU in Thai Kok Choi. Uh, we are concerned about our living conditions and also rent. The Kai Fongs are very concerned about um, your various policies. The government is the administration. You are the manager of housing units in Hong Kong. You should provide an environment where people can live and work happily. We are not asking you to guarantee that everybody would have work and a, a unit to, to their own names. But we are only asking for an environment that would afford us to live and work decently. This is not too much to ask. Just look at the grassroots and the living conditions now. Um, they have to pay very high rent. Living expenses are high. They make a, an income of eight to $9,000 a month, and they can hardly make ends meet. If suddenly the landlord increases rent, uh, they may be evicted right away. And they are really in a very poor situation, uh, not to mention those in SDUs. They live in very crowded housing, and there is abuse in the collection of electricity and water tariff. As you know, um, in Thai Kok Choi, the most uh, the poorest situation is that um, a family of three live in an SDU of 50 square feet. If you have a choice, no one wants to live in an SDU, and Thai Kok Choi Kai Fongs just would like to have more decent living conditions. But then your policies never benefit the grassroots. Just like the policy to allow green farm applicants to buy new H, uh, PRH, we believe PRH should be for the waiting list applicants. But you are thinking of selling off new PRH to green farm applicants. You say that would help circulation of PRH. But then there are a few um, disadvantages. The administrative procedures would be very complicated because you have to spend more time to deal with another set of applications. Uh, this will be a waste of time for civil servants. And also, there will be longer time taken in order to make the allocation, and people in the waiting list have to wait longer. So we hope this so-called um, green form applicants buying new PRH should be scrapped, and new PRH should be directly allocated to waiting list applicants. So you can shorten the waiting time. There are 280,000 applications on the waiting list, and the biggest problem is that there is a short supply of PRH, and it has nothing to do with different modes of housing. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chen Kin Hei. Good afternoon. I am Chen from the concern group um, about SDU in Thai Kok Choi. We'd like to make certain proposals with regard to the PRH allocation system. Every time when allocation is done, people are only given one offer. This is done um, by random choosing by computer. According to 2013 uh, audit report with regard to the allocation of 
rented PRH. About 29% of people on the waiting list have waited for over three years, and 7% have waited for more than five years. We think you should make three offers at one go for people to choose. So you can quicken the process, you can shorten the waiting time, and also you can minimize uh, the administrative cost. For each application, um, they would only get one unit eventually. But the government would say that there's not enough supply of PLH units. But we suggest this. Well, even though you have to renovate um, certain PLH units, you can still offer it as a choice for the applicants. Maybe the applicant can ask the government to refund them with the uh, retrofitting or renovating fees so that they can move in as soon as possible. I hope that the relevant government officials will listen to our suggestions and follow up accordingly. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chen Chiu Long. I am a social worker in the Tai Kok Chui district. Well, to follow up on what uh, Mr. Chen said just now, I would also like to make a suggestion. I'm a ghostbuster today. I hope members and government officials can pay attention to this for the present PLH allocation system. Uh, Ms. Wong Hin Yu said that it's not the allocation that takes a long time, it's the applicants that are choosy and the units are allocated at random by computer. So where is the ghost? The ghost is, well, I give you one offer and you reject it, then the um, housing authority has already um, achieved its target. So if the allocation is at random, why can't you give the applicants three choices? Each time, eventually they would choose only one unit, and the um, housing authority would not lose anything. The housing authority still have still have um, more than ten thousand vacant units. So, how come you cannot change your old system? And also, can members look into this? Now, this so-called at random allocation by computer is it really? That randomly, because um, I know a person who lives in Tai Kok Chui. He's been given two offers at random, but both of these offers are in um, Chai Wan. So he's just left with one last chance. If the government give them three offers in one go, the, gov um, the housing authority would not suffer any loss. Why don't you do that? And also, according to Mr. Ying, he said it's very difficult to. Um, find sites in the urban areas and there is a shortage of 40,000 units and this morning some deputations have given new ideas to Mr. Ying. Now the ULA has resumed a lot of land. The government admits that there is a shortage of land in the urban area but the government has never said that it doesn't have any money. It's, that's just a shortage of land. It's not that it doesn't have money. Now you have resumed a lot of sites in Kuantong Tong and Tai Kok Choi. You can use some of them. You can the governments can buy this size from the ULA, and then you can build PLH on them. And also, I would like to make another suggestion. That is about rent subsidy. Now, if within three years you cannot allocate a unit to an applicant, then it's fair for you to give the applicant a rent subsidy. Now, if you are saying that the rent subsidy would uh, prop up the market price, then you can impose rental control. Next, Ms. Yang Wing Chi. I'm a representative of the Land Justice uh, League. As for the whole um, LTHS, it stresses that um, it will be supply led. So that means the government will not do anything and the unfair system will continue. A lot of people um, have talked about ULA land, um, green land, uh, agricultural land, and now they are rezoned. And that is just because.
because the property developers want to do that. So uh, where can people live? So when we look at the LTHS, it hasn't uh, come up with any idea to solve the problem. So we want to make some suggestions. In many capitalist countries, advanced countries, they are already doing this, but we are very backward. We haven't done anything. And why it doesn't Hong Kong have a um, property tax system? It's very easy to implement. Uh, if you have another, if you have a second property, um, a tax should be imposed. Now, yes, you have um, special stamp duty. However, the government has always reiterated that this is just a temporary measure. And it's not a progressive tax. tax. So this is not a long-term policy. Well, we do not want to encourage people to buy a second flat. People just need one flat to live in. So why can't this be done? And secondly, why don't we have a vacant property tax? A lot of people have no place to live. And the government says that resources have to be used in a better manner. So how come we can see that flats are being hoarded and flats are being left vacant? The government says that now the um, vacancy rate is low. However, people have shown us the figures. Uh, we have over 200,000 units that are possibly vacant. That is, there's, there's nobody living in them. So has the government conducted a proper study? Where has our property resources gone, and people are just hoarding flats, and they are waiting for a higher price. Uh, we have seen many vacant shops and unused agricultural land. How come the government doesn't do anything about this? And also, I think um, property price increase tax should also be imposed. Now people really want to buy flats because um, labor doesn't uh, uh, is not valuable. We want people to know that speculation is unfair. Next, Mr. Anthony Basheek. Now, in this uh, year's policy address, it says that uh, more than 2,000 HOS flats and more than 20,000 PLH flats will be provided in the coming years. But we think that the figure should be 5,000 and 30,000 instead. CY Lang uh, once promised that um, in the coming 10 years, 170,000 PLH units will be built. But um, he didn't mention that in this year's policy address. Now the um, people in the waiting list are ever increasing. It shows that the housing policy now is not working. We think that the government has underestimated Hong Kong people's need for housing. Um, some people are being displaced because um, of the ULL policy as well. The government should have the responsibility on to the shortage of land supply, but we think this is a just uh, CY Leung's excuse um, for transferring interest. We think brown lands should be ex uh, should be used, and also uh, more assisted housing should be provided. Military land should also be resumed, and small house policy should be reviewed. As for long term housing policy, I think the government has made a misjudgment. Hong Kong people do not have a housing choice and um, the housing uh, price is not affordable. So many grassroots have to resort to SDUs and the living environment is very unsafe. The Civic Party thinks that the government should set standards for appropriate accommodation. Then strategically, um, the housing problem can be resolved, and also uh, rents have um, skyrocketed in the past years. Some people have to spend thirty percent of their income for rents, so many of them are forced to live in SDUs, and this has become a 
serious social problem. However, the government's paper has um his inclination already he says that um overseas examples cannot be introduced into Hong Kong and rental control cannot be imposed in Hong Kong. Actually, for rental control, it can be divided into two things: that is, a rent control and people's right to live. The government is trying to scare people, saying that rental control cannot be imposed. There will be a lot of problems, but there can be a, a lot of solutions. For example, the removal period can be lengthened so that the tenants can be given more time so that they can find a new unit. And we. Ask the government to review the possibility of imposing rental control. Thank you. Uh, next, Mr. Augustine Yu. Last year, we conducted a study um, on Shek Wuhui SDU. I'm not going into the details of the study today. However, we have conducted one. Hundred interviews, so there are one hundred stories. Uh, one of the most impressive stories is that there was this um, single mother. Um, she find it hard to make ends meet, but she's unable to apply for PLH because she's making more than twenty thousand dollars a month. So eventually, she quitted her job in order to get a PLH. Unit. I have seen many examples like this. Now, many people prefer quitting the job um, in order to get a PLH unit because they find it homeless, uh, hopeless if they um, have to continue uh, to live in SDUs. For example, a family of three or four. They have several kids, and um, it's so crowded that. Um, there would be conflicts among family members every day. Some of the people I know have been waiting for PLH for three years to five years. Uh, you say that the median is four years. Just now, a gentleman said that, well, for Shangshui uh, residents, they would only be allocated a twin one unit, nowhere else. The kids are studying in Shangshui, and you ask these families to move to Tunmun. What can they do? So most of them have most of them have to turn down the um, housing authority's offer, and repeatedly it's like this. Some families make thirty thousand or dollars a year, but so a, a month, but so they have to live in SDUs. Well, living in SDU is not that bad. I have known. I will. I know some women. They say that in Sheku Hui they cannot live in SDU. They have to move to rural villages. They have to live in sheds, and they even have to um, live in bad compartments um, in Law Wu, and each of it would cost one thousand six hundred dollars. So for the residents in North District, they are facing a huge serious a huge housing problem. In the coming few years, we do not see any new supply of PRH in the North District. And many people in the North District complain to me that they have nowhere to live. So I hope that the government would change the public-private split so that more public housing can be built. Thank you. Next, Ms. Chen Hingning. Thank you, Chairman. As for the SDU problem in Hong Kong, is not only in uh, traditional grassroots areas such as Sham Shui Po. It's also um, prevalent in North District. A lot of SDU's uh, tenants are waiting for PLH. However, they've been waiting forever. Well, SDUs, of course, have very poor environments, and the uh, rental per foot is even higher than a that of a luxury flat. That's totally absurd. And also, the landlords overcharge SDU uh, tenants for electricity and water. Do you know the real electricity tariff and water charge? Electricity. F um, Tariff is one dollar ten cents per unit, and for water is nine point oh five dollars per unit. According to a study 
on Shekwu Hui SDU last year, we discovered that among 100 households, only 28 of them know how much they are paying for each unit of electricity, and only five households are paying the standard CPL electricity um, tariff rate. So they are actually paying extra, and the extra money is pocketed by the uh, intermediary or landlords, while some um, scrupulous landlords would um, state it on the reference document um, saying that they are now collecting $1.6 for each um, electricity unit. But has the government uh, done anything to this? Do the power companies and water supplies department know about this? No, no monitoring has been done. This amounts to conniving with these uh, utility companies to collect abusive charges. You always tell us to abide by the law, but then I think you are taking the lead to encourage landlords and intermediaries to break the law. We are already having a lot of difficulties, and if I can put it bluntly, you are like getting money from a beggar's bowl. You have to educate the public more. You have to monitor the situation of the abusive collection of tariffs. We hope you can set up a complaints committee to tackle complaints about the abusive collection of water and electricity charges. But what is most important is to increase the supply of PRH. When you plan new housing, you have to lower the proportion of private housing. The ratio between public and private housing should be 7 to 3, so we can have housing within a reasonable waiting time. This is the uh, be-all and end-all for our housing problem. Thanks, Ms. Chen. Thank you. Um, as the saying goes, Hong Kong people um, need to find uh, housing for a long time before they have it. In your construction policies, um, you don't have any regard to the needs of the grassroots. According to the RTHS um, report, uh, there are 86,000 SDUs, a rise of 30 percent over last year. In Shek Wu Hui, there are 639 SDUs in a very small area. People have to use uh, the same toilet and the same kitchen in the unit, but then rents are exorbitant, and it is well with outside the affordability of the grassroots. Also, these SDU tenants are charged really high water and electricity tariffs. People are charged a dollar eighty cents to two dollar sixty cents for one unit of electricity. In fact, this is the standard for charging um, electricity at, at industrial premises. People in SDUs usually have low-paid jobs uh, like cleaners, security guards, and construction workers. The government knows we don't have enough housing in Hong Kong, so you are trying to build more housing. But you are building HOS instead of PRH, and SDU tenants wait for PRH, and they have to wait over three, four years before they get a unit. When you consider the LTHS, you can consider giving priority to SDU tenants. Many of them are cleaners and security guards, and in fact, they make a huge contribution to society. Without them, Hong Kong will not be so clean and the law and order situation will not be as good. So have you really uh, treat these people as part of the cit citizenry of Hong Kong? Uh, because what you are doing is unfair to them. Next, Mr. Chen Puyho. Thank you, Chairman. The LTHS says there will be 480,000 units in the next 10 years. Looks like a big figure, but only 290,000 are public housing units. On the waiting list, we have 260,000 households waiting. This is 2015. What about 2025? In other words, a decade later, how many people there will be on the waiting list? People uh, will still be waiting. You say people are given a unit. 
um, after waiting for three years. But according to report number 26 of the Audit Commission, it is said that from 2002 to 2011, the people waited for five years before they got a unit. How many five-year periods do you have in a lifetime? Let us look at Shek Wu Hoi. There is this survey. 30% of people waited four years, 15% waited five years or over, and the average time is 3.3 years. In other words, that exceeds the waiting time you professed. Who wants to live in an SDU of 100 square feet if they have a choice? Let us look at Xiong Shui. You are charged 3000 to $4,000 in rent uh, for just an SDU of 100 square feet. Uh, in a that is a very stuffy uh, house. I believe that is just a little bigger than the toilet in your houses, uh, officials. And also there is the um, unfair charging of water and electricity tariffs. And people are already paying five thousand dollars just for rent, electricity, and water. You always say that people have to cooperate with you and accept. A rezoning of land. I can tell you in Fanling we have a golf course and it has an area of 170 hectares, but you charge the golf course rent um, a $1,000 only. You say it has the obligation to open up the golf course for public use, but I think uh, nobody has heard anybody use it and grassroots don't have time for golf. They don't even have time for table tennis. So I like to say this to the officials. Don't resort to excuses anymore. You have a way to do it if there is the will. The golf course occupies government land. Give them 12 month notice and they will have to return the land to you. I hope you will consider getting back the land from the golf course operator and build public housing so people don't have to wait five years and so you can deliver your promise of the waiting time being three years. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Yuan Chan Him. Last year you released the LTHS saying that in 10 years uh, you will build 480,000 and a ratio of 6 to 4 between public and private housing. In other words, you will have to build 28,800 units every year. But according to a paper submitted to LegCo last year, from 2014-15 to 2018-19, the total construction will just be 87,800. In other words, you only achieve 60 percent of the target. In other words, in the five years after 2018-19, if you were to achieve your target, you will have to build an average of 40,000 units every year. You don't have plans for really large estates. You are only going to build uh, single standing buildings. And I don't know how you are going to deliver your promise. The LTHS says that there will be 22 estates that will be redeveloped. Mr. Ying, you were not the director yet. In Kuaixing West, there was a big reaction, and I, I live there. I have to declare interest. District councillors and district organizers have organized over 20 residence meetings after that, and there were 8 to 10 petitions. I think you have received a, a petition letter yourself, Mr. Ying. The chairman and Mr. Liang Yu Chong are very concerned about redevelopment of this estate, and I have put forward a proposal paper to the chairman. Kuaixing West, we have 5,300 households there, and after redevelopment, there, there will at least be 8,800 units. In other words, there will be 60 percent more people. And if you think about rehousing, you will demolish one building with uh, 68 units. You will rehouse them in Tai Wo Hall, which is 400 meters away. There will be 700, 760 units in that new estate, and you will be able to demolish Block 4 and the car park, and then you will continue to do the decanting. Mr. Ying, I have a, a very long proposal on that, and I can email it to you. Out of the 22 um, estates mentioned in the LTHS, there are over 76,000 units involved, and I'm sure if you can rebuild all the 22 units, uh, estates, you will be able to provide 35,000 more units. Given your present pace of construction, 
you can only have about 200,000 units after 10 years. And if you are willing to do the redevelopment, you will only be building uh, 35,000 to 40,000 units more. So how can you deliver your promise? And in fact, you are not very um, willing to do the redevelopment, it seems. That's all. Ms. Chen Kam Wai. Good afternoon, Chairman and members. I'd like to first of all comment on the policy address and the LTHS. And my personal view is that um, there is a lot of hot air. You are not going to really deliver the proposed figure. In fact, you are also quoting from what has been done in the last term of government. You just claim the credit now. Talking about your proposals, the um, long-term view is that, um, first of all, you should look at how you want to manage public housing. And secondly, land supply. Number three, housing allocation. First of all, your mindset about management of PRH. Do you think housing is for living in or for speculation? You always say uh, if there is too much housing and uh, there will be if effect on the economy, etc. But you have to understand housing is a basic need. It is not a populist policy. It is about basic human rights. But you mix up basic human rights and the economy. You you try you are trying to uh, have them stand against each other. And you always say there is not enough land. But then there is a lot of land in Hong Kong. It's just whether you are happy to develop it. Just like um, other deputations who have said that you can resume land of all the private clubs in Hong Kong and you can easily build 100,000 units on them. And this is so easily done. But because uh, they are in the hands of conglomerates or um, other people and uh, people are paying a high price for their membership, etc. You don't want to do it to affect private interest. And number three, it is important to stabilize property prices. But this is not happening. Prices are surging. You say if there is a drop in property prices, the economy will be affected. But it is also affecting the economy now when the prices are skyrocketing. People can't buy housing. They have to pay rent. And so you have less money in your pocket for other kinds of consumption. And those in business, they have the biggest cost in uh, rent. How can they have a profitable business? And also public-private participation. I think that's a cheat. You can't ask private developers to make smaller profits. And I'd like to say this on behalf of my friend. The problem boils down to this, that the land CY Leung government is plagued with its own problems. It cannot govern itself, so you cannot govern well. No matter what tough measures you take, you are still making uh, luxury housing more, more unaffordable and uh, the effect is trickling down to other kinds of housing. Next, next Ms. Cheung Yi Tick uh, on the other side. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to talk about public housing. Last week, you revised the income and asset limit for PRH. But how many people will still qualify? I think um, the figure will be small. And just last week, well, in, in fact, this Wednesday, you again um, re revised the standards. And you said starting from the age of 18, people can queue up. And after 30 years, you will need 400 marks recorded against your name before you will get a unit. Now, that person will be in his 40s or 50s. I think they need an, an, a home for the elderly instead of PRH. Um, the present system is unfair to the singletons. The singleton can in fact make a bigger salary, but because they are in the waiting list, they settle for a lower salary so they can remain in the waiting list. And they also have to wait long for PRH. They have to compete with 2P or 3P families. I don't discriminate against new arrivals, but why is it that those 
who have not lived in Hong Kong for seven years are given housing. Instead of Hong Kong residents, I have this friend who is in his fifties. He has been waiting and is now sixty years old, but he is not given housing. It is said that um, given his age, he should not have to wait too long. But then he's still waiting. You also say there is a lack of land.、Uh, you say you can't do anything. You ask people to move to other units so、uh, PRH can be vacated for the needy. So where should they go? So some households are asked to move around because they、um, do not qualify for the most updated、uh, requirements. So you have to move them to move away, and that's.、Uh, If there is one less household member, you force them to move again. So is this reasonable? We really don't understand how the government thinks. Is are you thinking about people's basic rights? And for Hong Kong people, do we have the right to be housed in PRH? It seems that we are. Beggars, we are begging the government to give us this, but that's not the way it should be. We all have the right to housing. Why does the government do all this? Does is the government trying to allay our pressure? I hope to see a more appropriate、um, policy. Next, Miss Li Shilin. Today I'll be talking about several areas. First, redevelopment of old PLH estates. I know the chairperson is very concerned about this, and I hope the government would explain more about the redevelopment of Wafu estates. Please do not be, give、uh, the residents a false hope. The redevelop redevelopment of Wafu Estate should be sped up, and you should explain to us about the feasibility study,、uh, public consultation, EIA, etc. And we ask the government to look at the possibility of moving the、uh, Wong Chuk Hang Police School to a more remote area, so that the urban area. In Aberdeen can be used for PL action HOS, and also land should be used in a better manner, because a land in the southern district is not well used now. And also about the size of PL H. Oh,、uh, in Hong Kong we really lack singleton PL H units, and the government's not building many of them. So I. Think the government should improve its policy. Thirdly, in the urban area, bigger PLH units should be built so that bigger、uh, families can be accommodated. How many PLH units are there in the urban area which are suitable for five-person, six-person, and seven-person families? And how many of these units can be used for、um, accommodating overcrowded households? Traditional Chinese families want to live there with their family members. They want to take care of their old elderly. However, the present housing policy does not encourage this. And、uh, lastly, I hope that young people can also be helped. The waiting time should also be、uh, reassessed. Young people have to repay their grants and loans after graduation, so this should also be taken into account. Well, I think all the deputations have spoken already. Permanent secretary, for this session we have more time, so, so you will be given more time to explain. I would like to thank all the deputations for coming here to let us know their views. As for the housing problem, we of course have a, a lot of issues to solve in the future, and your views will be taken into account. So I would like to、uh, respond to your opinions at the moment. Today we are talking about long-term housing strategy. The government knows that、um, 
the housing problem in Hong Kong is a long-standing one, and we will have to make a lot of effort to tackle that problem. We uh, set up the Long-Term Housing Strategy Steering Committee in 2012, and under the Electrical uh, Housing Panel, a subcommittee on the Long-Term Housing Strategy has also been set up, and many meetings have been held. Well, the Secretary is very busy today, um, so he cannot come here, but he's very concerned about housing problems. He has attended a lot of the subcommittee on the long-term housing strategy uh, meetings of the Legislative Council. Uh, we have had a lot of views, and in December last year, we announced the government's LTHS, and it covers all the areas you mentioned. And they can mainly be divided into several um, categories. For example, PLH, what should, will we be doing with them? And how about um, subsidized sale flats? And also, um, how about housing in the private sector? Now, I believe many of you have read the documents, so I am not going into the de details of these three areas. Well, the Government says that um, in ten years' time, um, four hundred and eighty thousand units will be built, and this is built on our calculation and projection of long-term housing demand. Some people say that. We have not taken into account the uh, housing demand generated from develop redevelopment. Well, actually, we have uh, taken that into account. At the end of 2014, we have produced a uh, progress report, and all the relevant detailed calculations are in there. You can take a look at that. And also, just now, I mentioned several types of housing. Let me talk about PLH first. Many of you mentioned a problem that is for the existing um, usage of uh, or the uh, utilization of ex existing uh, PLH units. Well, in the coming um, ten years, we hope that two hundred thousand more units will be built. But the existing units should also be well used. Now, other than the two hundred thousand new units. Now each year we will be uh, recovering seven thousand units um, for reallocation as well. So this will mean a significant amount in ten years. Just now, some of you asked about a vacancy rate. Now this is something we need to monitor constantly because a lot of people want to be housed in PLH, so PLH units should not be uh, left vacant unreasonably. So, uh, mentioned our progress report, uh, which was published last December, and the vacancy rate um, is 0 0.52 percent. That means 3,888 units, and the latest figure. Is um, 0 0.4 percent and 288 um, 2,800 um, units. Well, some of the units are not exactly left vacant because when we um, get back a unit, we will need several weeks or months to uh, redecorate the unit. So that's why it may seem vacant. This morning there were two sessions, and we also had a, a lot of views about uh, well-off tenants and about the point system. We have had views in uh, several areas. Some people think that we should be stricter. Others think that we should be more lenient. For the housing authority, it understands that these problems have to be resolved. They already discussed this in the uh, meeting at the end of last year. Even HA members had different views on this, so uh, no decision was made. But this will continue to be on the agenda. As for uh, the pond system, a lot of options have been discussed. Um, I think you may know this. Also, different members um, had different views, and. For the details, you can find them in the implementation milestones report that we uh, promulgated last December. 
some of you mentioned um, PLH allocation. I have read some audit reports and um, also some member some uh, people suggest that um, at each offer we should um, offer three units. Actually, we have done that, but it's not effective. So now we uh, offering one unit each time. As for redevelopment, the LTHS steering committee has also looked at that. There are several paragraphs in the um, document about this. The audit also made a report last year, and the PAC also held hearings about this. Redevelopment was also discussed. I am not going to the details of this. You can refer to our report. HA in 2011 formulated a redevelopment policy. The audit agrees that we can continue with that. That is, we should look at the PLHS date on a case by case basis, and we should look at four uh, basic criteria. And now we are still um, adhering to this. We are looking at the estates um, on a case by case basis. Now, pe some people ask about Kwai Sing West estates and Huafu estates. These are details, so at um, this moment, I'm not I'm going to talk about them. And for PLH, uh, uh, we have been talking about people using green forms to buy uh, PLH units. Well, actually, when we discuss LTHS, this um, also came up for some green form green form holders. Well, including those who are already living in PLH or those who are waiting for PLH, uh, many of them can afford to buy their own uh, PLH flats. Now, if you look at the history, you can see that there is a ratio um, of uh, green form holders that were allowed to do this. Last year, we launched um, 2,000 units and 10,000 um, green form holders uh, got application forms from us. So we have taken all this into account in this year's policy address the CERCHA to conduct a um, new trial scheme. Uh, now we are still looking at the details of this. That is um, allowing green form holders to buy new PLH units. So the um, HA will continue to look into this and uh, map up the details. Some people are saying that this measure is used to uh, prop up the market. No, I don't think this is what the government intends to do. And let me talk about um, the private property market. Some people agree that the government should provide more you know, uh, public um, units, and the problem of property speculation should also be tackled. In the past few years, we have introduced a um, demand management system. Now we have three new types of stamp duties. And last year, we last month we submitted a paper to the housing panel. We explained about um, two types of uh, stamp duty. That is a uh, special stamp duty. That is to target speculators, and uh, we have some figures. Well, at the peak, uh, twenty percent of the uh, purchase were uh, for speculation, but now it's dropped significantly. And also, we need to tackle um, the issue of foreign buyers. Well, at the peak, it was 40%, and now it's dropped to 1.7%. So we reported to the panel. We said that these two measures uh, have been effective. And for double stamp duty, is for uh, landlords who are buying the second flat. The Treasury is now um, reviewing this issue, and later on, we will be reporting to the LegCo again. And for rental control. In the LTHS discussions, this has been mentioned repeatedly, and also in July last uh, year, we submitted a long paper to the LegCo. We have looked at other countries' implementation of rental control. We have um, also included the academia's uh, studies on this. We have 
also incorporated different views from um, our walks of life. We talked to the uh, Let's Go uh, about this, and also on page 33 of the LTHS document, we explain in detail as to why we don't think uh, rental control is a good way out. Some people think that we are trying to protect landlords. We um, allow landlords to profiteer. But if you look at paragraph 33 of our report, we have analyzed um, all the consequences of imposing rental control. And our conclusion is that rental control may not help the people we are trying to help. There are a lot of reasons, so that's why we will not be introducing rental control. So, um, Chairman, I just uh, responded briefly to the uh, deputations. Hey, Leng. The floor is now open to members. Mr. Leng Yuchong, five minutes for you, including the reply. Uh, is your mic on? Thank you, Chair. I'd like to thank so many friends for finding the time on a Saturday afternoon to come here to express your views. I'd like to thank the dep deputations and individuals who are here. I think um, in this session, you have concentrated on one point, and that is the supply of PRH. You can see that at present there is a huge shortfall, and you have put forward many aspirations. In fact, um, you have also mentioned the point of redevelopment, which has not been mentioned in the morning. Mr. Ying, uh, you have done a study, but uh, unfortunately, you are not putting it into practice. You have done your study all right, but nothing has come out of it, and therefore people are disappointed. You mentioned 22 estates, but then nothing has come out of it. And those people are very disappointed. These 22 estates are indeed very old, and residents would like to have a, a better environment. But you have not really talked to them how to take your plan forward. You have just said that according to certain criteria, these estates are listed in this list, and you're not going to do anything more. But the principle remains that after redevelopment, there can be more units built for people. That is a very good um, advantage, uh, and you are not making full use of it. And if you are willing to do it, it can go some way in resolving the problem of lack of land. And also, uh, Madam Chair, I think you know this very well. We have tackled this issue of redevelopment over the last 16 years. And the principle is that there should be same district rehousing for the displaced residents. If you don't think from that direction, there will be a lot of um, rejection for your proposals, just like in Kuaixing, West, there are a few sites where public housing is being built. We believe you should take the opportunity to move people to a new block and then demolish the old block and, and do it that way. If you don't grasp the opportunity now, if the opportunity is lost, it will be very difficult for you to do redevelopment because you don't know where to move the Kuaixing West residents to. I find it very regrettable that you are not making any proposals for this. And I believe other estates are in the same situation. Maybe Wafu Estate is in the same situation. So, Chair, Mr. Ying has just glossed over the issue in his response. Now there is more time, Mr. Ying. I hope you can be more specific and tell us what you are going to do with regard to um, urban renewal. P.S. Yes, Chairman. I uh, did not say a lot about this because I had to respond to many points. But now I can speak in more detail. On different occasions in LegCo, we have discussed this issue. Our thinking is, it is not that we definitely would not go about redevelopment, but when individual estates can comply with our criteria and if the objective environment is right, we will redevelop that estate. And we will have to give reassurance to the residents. We will not suddenly say we want to redevelop an estate. We will give a notice period of three years. As the Secretary has told you, 
there will not be a big scale redevelopment program. And I can put it this way: as many deputations said, many people are waiting to be housed. They are not yet in public housing, and we have to. Anxiously meet the demand first. As for those in PRH, they are already in PRH. Yes, some of the estates are old, but they are already in PRH. If our resources are not going to meet every demand, and if I build new housing, I think it is right for us to allocate them to people who are still waiting. Should we move、um, incumbent? Tenants to the new housing, so we can demolish the old housing. Well, that that will make people wait even longer if they are on the waiting list, and there will be a big demand on public housing resources. Well, but I'm not saying that we are not going to do anything for incumbent tenants. As I have always always explained, we are going to improve the environment. Continuously, like providing universal accessibility and rebuilding the facade, etc. Mr. Liang Kuohong, Chairman, one non-Chinese speaker from、um, the Lion Rock Institute.、Um, he is a research assistant. Has mentioned me. I don't know whether he understands the public housing. Policy.、Um, I I don't think he should be a research assistant if he doesn't know. Well,、um, I of course live in public housing, and you know my salary. But I don't have a lot of assets. That is why I can be there. It's as simple as that. Is it that you don't agree with that policy? Right? They are watching me. They are monitoring me. Right? The Lion Rock Institute promotes the new freedom philosophy, but、uh, he, they are not scolding Xi Weiling and Li Keqiang. I find that rather strange. There is collusion between government and、um, business, and there is also、um, cronyism. Don't you hate that most? I am Leung, and、uh, Xi Weiling is also Leung. How do you view Xi Weiling? How do you view Li Keqiang? And how do you view the wealth gap in Hong Kong? You promote a low taxation system. You promote、uh, reducing taxes. But then, how can we tackle the wealth gap?、Uh, I'm asking the Lion Rock Institute. You say there should be a tax reduction, but the tax rate is already very low. So what are you saying? Are you really trying to help the poor? I can tell you this. They are all watching me. Two months ago, well, four or five years ago,、uh, LSP opened a company and they were trying to investigate into it. And they asked me, "You own a you own a company? Did it make a profit?" So、uh, don't worry about me. Worry about your boss. Your boss. Uh, Sun Pakman, he is a a rich guy.、Uh, he his father is a rich guy. If his father has to pay more tax, he will inherit less wealth. Okay, let's come back here. Number one. If the LTHS. Says that there is no land for housing. Then we'll say, as they say,、uh, we'll respect the market. But do you think we should use the resumption of land ordinance, just like resuming land for URA and resuming land for the white elephant projects of the government, and make use of Cap One O Five to resume land hoarded? By developers and pay them the market rent, so you don't have to do reclamation. You don't have to、um, cut mountains. When you say in the LTHS you don't have land, have you considered doing that? My question is, why is it that the URA and when you put out land for sale, 
and also when you develop NTNE, you always choose the large developers, and you say there will be compensation only when you own land up to uh, or at least uh, three thousand square meters. Why don't you compensate the small land owners? P.S. One of the advantages of having the LTHS is that within government, when you have this policy, all bureaus and departments have to do their part in order to help achieve the objectives. The Development Bureau is, of course, a close partner. The member um, asked questions uh, as to how we can get land, but please pardon us. We are from the housing uh, side, and we cannot answer questions on land. I can take your views back to the Development Bureau. Mr. Leung? I also like uh, the non-Chinese speaker to understand the Hong Kong housing policy. You have to know the entire policy. It's actually very simple. I use my salary to do um, social activist programs, and I also donate it to other people. Uh, we can use, we can all use our money for different purposes. Okay, second round, Leung Yu Chong, four minutes. Just now, when Mr. Ying answered my question on redevelopment, he said that in redevelopment we are going to build new blocks, and they are important for people on the waiting list. If they are used for rehousing people decant, uh, displaced by redevelopment, then uh, there will not be new housing for the waiting list people. Well, if your logic is right, then you should not make the announcement covering 22 estates. Well, of course we know you have to find rehousing for the displaced residents. The simple is the, the logic simple, isn't it? Or else how how else can you do redevelopment? The thing is, in the past when you went about redevelopment, you abided by one principle and that is same district rehousing. Now you have the chance to do it. And we are saying that we are not asking for all the new blocks to be allocated to the residents affected. I'm saying you can demo uh, move people out of one block and then demolish that block so you can build a new block in that place. And for waiting list residents, there will be just a, a minor impact. And if you do your sums, I, I don't think uh, there will be a, a lot of people affected. So why don't you do it according to your logic then? In what circumstances? Can you allow rehousing to take place, Mr. Ying, Mr. Uh, or Madam Chair? Mr. Liang Yu Chong uh, talked about a principle that we always apply to redevelopment, and that is we'll try our very best to find appropriate rehousing in the vicinity of the redeveloped blocks, and uh, that is correct in the 2011 policy. There are four pillar principles, and this is one of those. So I can confirm that point. And secondly, I did not say that we definitely would not go about de redevelopment. I was just saying that we will consider the different estates, and if it complies with, with all our criteria, then we can do it. So it's just that we do not have a broad brush approach to cover all the 22 estates. And I was just saying, if there is a, a big redevelopment project, there will certainly be an impact on the waiting list applicants. Say, for example, in Shui O in Sha Tin, we are having population intake now, and it offers over 10,000 new units. We are now um, giving them to the waiting list applicants now. But if we do redevelopment, then these 10,000 new units cannot be allocated to the applicants. We have to move people from old estates into the new estate, and then we will rebuild that estate. Uh, in five, six years. In other words, the applicants who are in SDUs will have to wait another five, six years. And Mr. Leng Yuchong will say, well, don't take up all the 10,000 units. Take up a, a proportion of those. But no matter how few we use, still some units will be taken away from the waiting list applicants. So uh, that's the case. And it is not that I definitely will not consider redevelopment. We'll just uh, look at each state on its own merit. 
Well, Mr. Ying, have you uh, looked at the history? Over the past 16 years, I have been very concerned about redevelopment, and I have witnessed the redevelopment of some PRHS sticks. Well, do you know that we can demolish one block and rehouse one block? We don't have to do the whole estate in one go. You can do it block by block, and it won't have such a huge impact. That is, one hundred. Um, ten thousand um, PLH units would be used. No way. Okay. Um, your time is up. I would also like to ask about redevelopment. As Mr. Liang Yuchong said just now, according to your logic, in the coming few years, you will not have a site for um, twenty-nine PLH estates. Now you only have sites for two hundred and fifty thousand PLH units. So while there are still people in the waiting list, then you will not redevelop any old PLH estates. So how come you have that list of um, twenty-two old PLH estates? So you are just telling the tenants that the uh, estate should be redeveloped, but I. Have my hands full, so I'm not doing anything. And for Waffle Estate, you have announced that it will be redeveloped. But then, according to your your logic, you shouldn't redevelop Waffle Estate because you do not want some PLH units to be held that way. So, are you not contradicting yourself? Just now, Mr. Yang Chen Him, a member of the public, said that in Kuising West Estate, well, there is one block with only 62 units. And our suggestion is that you should demolish one block, build one block, etc. So now we have this block with only 62 units. You can do that. Mr. Ying, you are more familiar with this with me. For a PLH block, how many units are there? You say that you cannot find new sites, and so there is a shortfall of tens of thousands of PLH units. So why won't you consider this? This is a low density old PLH estate. You can start with it, then you can provide more PLH units. You cannot meet the targets anyway, and this may be one of the solutions. I'm not asking you to hold up all the units. I'm just talking about 62 units. Why don't you do that? And from um, this morning till now, several questions have been repeated. That is about allocation. Can you um, give three offers in one go? Um, you said that you've tried that before, and that has proven to be ineffective. But many deputations said that. Uh, for example, if you uh, are living in Shek Wu Hui, North District, then you can only get um, units in Chun Moon. This morning, um, people talked about 18 districts, but I don't think that can be done. However, um, can you do it in this manner? You can divide it into anti East, anti West, Kowloon, and Hong Kong. So can you do it this way? Well, it sounds so nice. Now I'm offering you a PLH unit, but you are asking people to move away f um, from their original district, and that's very far away, Mr. Ying. Well, f uh, first on redevelopment, I would like to make it clearer, Madam Chair. It seems that you are still querying my logic. It's not that we definitely will not do redevelopment. It's just that we won't do it um, in a large scale. We can do it project by project. If all the conditions are met, then uh, we will do it. We will do it transparently. We will talk to all the tenants, etc. So there, um, some projects will be carried out. You have asked about a waffle estate. We have been working um, about this for the past twelve months. We have talked to the tenants. We have talked to uh, tenants' association. We are conducting 
um, technical uh, feasibility studies, etc. As for the list of 22 estates, previously I also explained about this. That's um, an internal list. We'll, we'll be looking at the estates. We will try to find out whether um, the estates the are suitable for redevelopment. So um, this is what we are thinking about. We are not saying that all these um, 22 estates are suitable for redevelopment. I remember when I came last year, many people also asked us about our uh, purpose of redevelopment. So we have been explaining to tenants of different estates. We will not be doing it in a, a very large scale because it is not the right time. But um, there will be a lot of uh, public public consultations locally, so the tenants shouldn't be too worried. For redeveloping um, estates, um, Likuan Estate was redeveloped. I witnessed that, and some tenants have to uh, be moved out, and then they were moved back to the estate again. They weren't very happy about it. And I remember when I lived at, in um, the old Chaiwan estate, they did this. I was living in this unit, and my next unit was under renovation, so I had to move to a Kayib estate. So for redeveloping old estates, there is one important factor. Oh, there must be proper in situ rehousing. People do not like to live in dilapidated flats. However, they cannot afford high rents. If it's a new unit, then of course the rent is higher. So if you can solve this problem, I think it can be done. Well, for while for estate, I've heard about it for a long time. And when I visited Wafu Estate, a lot of the tenants talked to me. They are concerned that when Wafu Estate is redeveloped, their uh, rights are not properly respected. Is that the case? And now the government has made a mistake in its policy. Now, this may not have anything to do with CY Leung. Wang Chuk Hang Estate, North Point Estate, and Shafa Estate. I think Mr. Ying, you know about this. These were estates that were built by the Housing Society for um, those people with better means. But now you are tearing them down, and you want to build luxury um, buildings on them. And Mong Chok Hang Estate is also a large estate for. Um, Value estate. I used to play football when there when I was a kid, and now it's redeveloped into a private luxury uh, residential building. And that's the same case with Home and Teen Estate. You have lost so many PLH units in these um, estates. When are you going to uh, replenish them? I I think this decision was made by uh, Donald Chang instead of CY Leung. If now you talk about that 22 estates, and now you are taking different factors into consideration, but I think clear criteria should be set, and there should be transparency. Don't tell us you are going to do it one time, and tell us you are not going to do it another time. For well, Mrs. Kerry Lam uh, talked about revitalizing industrial. Uh, buildings and now the it has this project has caused even more problems. Mr. Ying, as I said just now, uh, things should be made clearer. However, in the LTHS documents, um, you can read paragraphs 4.4 to 4.6. It's about our uh, public consultation and the views that we've got. And also, we've looked at the audit report and the PAC report. So, after looking at all these, 
we uh, put together this policy, which uh, set out from paragraphs 4.4 to 4.6. So we will not be uh, doing redevelopment in a large scale. If we find suitable estate, we will um, talk to the local tenants. We will be uh, trying our best to rehouse them in the same district. Well, um, P.S. I would like to ask questions about allocation again. Can you try to allocate flats to applicants that are in more or less the same district? Don't ask them to move to a faraway district. In the past, the H.A. had uh, more districts. However, um, is more time consuming. Now, for example, if you have to be rehoused in a particular district. Now, for example, if I live in Changsha Wan and I definitely have to be rehoused in Changsha Wan, then it will take a very long time. Well, I'm not talking about small districts like that. I'm talking about just Hong Kong and Kowloon, bigger areas. Okay, for example, Hong Kong. If there is no available flats on Hong Kong side, then the applicants would have to wait for an a even an even longer time. Well, originally there were eight districts, and now we have four districts because we want the waiting time to be shorter. Now the applicant should take all factors into account, and if he finds it acceptable, then he would get a PLH unit. So we have to um, balance between a reality and ideal. Just now, does then a a suggestion that is in one over can we um, give three choices to the applicants? Mr. Ying said that this has been done before, but it proved that it would take it a, a, even an even longer time because in a particular period, um, only units in a certain districts are available, and when we Give an offer to an applicant. We give the applicant several days um, for consideration. But if we um, give him three choices, then we would have to give the applicant more time. Maybe the applicant wants to go to the um, estate to have a look first. Then we will be holding up three units at the same time, and it will be a waste of time. That there was this pilot scheme and it lasted for one year, we found that it's not that effective. So that's why we resumed the old practice. Ms. Wong, you are saying that there will not be any new PLH units on Hong Kong Island, so that's why um, all the Hong Kong and Kowloon queues would have to be mixed. Now, if you know that in the coming five years, there will not be a supply of new flats on Hong Kong Island. Then, well, when if I am the applicant, then at least you should let me know. Then I can decide uh, whether I still want to wait in the queue. Maybe I should join the um, queue for Kowloon uh, housing. But what you are doing now is just for your convenience. The well, if you ask a person to move from um, Changsha Wan to Shao Ke Wan, of course he will turn the offer down. So you are just doing something to make sure that you can offer the applicants a flat within three years, but you don't care whether that person can really be housed. I don't think our HA colleagues would do that just to meet the or just to honor the performance pledge. So if the applicant turn down, turns down for the third time, um, he would have to line up again. Well, we will not force him to do anything. It's a matter of choice. But of course, um, he can choose to wait in another queue, uh, but that doesn't mean that it will be faster. So it's a choice of the applicants himself. 
if the applicant does not insist on a small district, a definite area, then、um, it will be faster for him to get a unit. I think、um, our session、um, can end here. What does any other member would like to ask question of Mr. Liu Yuchong? I think for choices, you、um, can come up with more. Uh, possibilities. You can give people、um, several choices: first choice, second choice, third choice, etc. So you should come up with more ideas. Now I think it's too rigid. You are saying that the、um, HA is not、uh, doing this for the sake of、uh, performance pledge, but actually I think that's what you are doing. Well, what if he turned down the offer for the third time? He cannot be given a, a fourth offer, right? Secondly, Mr. Yang, you repeatedly say that there will not be a large-scale redevelopment project. I didn't ask for that to be done. I was just asking you to redevelop one estate after another. Why can't you do it? People are used to it. People can accept redevelopment being done、uh, in their own estate. That has happened over the last sixteen years. That has happened with every estate. Well, in one or two particular cases, the entire estate was decanted. But why do you want to rehash the same point without listening to us? P.S. Chairman,、uh, Mr. Leung has repeated his question, so I'll just repeat my answer. Members, please look at 4.4 to 4.6 of the LTHS report. Thank you. We will ask the officials to、uh, answer questions first. P.S. Please continue.、Uh, I have already answered the question. Really, have you answered the question? But Mr. Leung asked two questions. You repeated the point on redevelopment. What about、uh, giving people、uh, choices in one offer, Miss Wong? I was trying to explain that.、Uh, now we have four areas because experience tells us that this may be a better arrangement. Because we really don't want residents to concentrate in a very small area. No, people are not stubborn. You can have first choice, second choice, and third choice. Why do you say people are stubborn, Miss Wong? Well, I still make the same point. You can make an offer with first, second, third choices, but. We are not dealing with one applicant at one time. If one offer is turned down, we have to immediately give it to another. Applicant, the thing is the processing time because if you allow someone to look at three choices at the same time, it affects other people because other people cannot、um, be offered the same choices. No, you are not answering my question. You said if they want Hong Kong Island, if there is no、uh, unit available in Hong Kong Island, then that person will not be given a unit. But what if I put Hong Kong as the first choice and Kowloon as the second choice? And, and no time will be wasted. Last member, Mr. Lam Kwok Hong, third round, three minutes, Chairman. I like to ask about in situ redevelopment. You mentioned twenty-two estates, and yet you have changed your policy to say that you will not do a large-scale redevelopment. In other words, what you say in the LTHS report has deviated from your previous undertakings. Let me ask about Pactin Estate. We discussed how you would manage it today. You are telling us that the LTHS policy is such that there will not be a large-scale redevelopment project. I don't know whether the residents know that that is your intention. You have to tell those residents that indeed you are not going to redevelop those estates any time soon. But you have done it before. You have done it for Wachee Estate, for example. Secondly, the matter of、uh, choice. I think you don't understand it. I have many people telling me that. After the second offer, they are very anxious and worried because they would have only one offer left. 
I can give you a proposal. You can announce all the available units on your website because it is, after all, a, a matter of matching. You know, tell people what units are available and let people try to match their needs with the units available. Say, if I live、uh, in a certain estate and I want to go to a certain district, then I can look at、um, the units available, and then I can contact you. Why can't you do it electronically for those people affected? Let people try to match、uh, themselves with the units available. Can you allow that to be done? You can always do that on your website, so you don't have to do it, and no time will be wasted. Some people might prefer a smaller unit if the district is right, and some people may want a bigger unit, so they are willing to go farther away. Do you get what I mean? It's just like the property agents; they take people to view units before、uh, people make a choice. Is that possible, P.S. or Miss Wong? Since、uh, there are two parts, let me take up the point on redevelopment first, and Miss Wong can think about the other point. Continue, just just go on. In、uh, last April, and、uh, people have、uh, been discussing this. I remember early last year, audit report number sixty-two mentioned. The idea of、uh, redevelopment, and this was also discussed at the PAC. And in July, there was a report done by the PAC. And then in December, we released the LTHS. I therefore say that in the last year, we have found the need to explain to the council and residents because some residents would like to have、uh, faster redevelopment, but while others are worried about redevelopment, but we are still. Duty bound to explain to members our approach because members here said actually that we should provide a checklist for redevelopment that can take place in the next five years, and we already said that we are not going to do it. We will have to look at each and every estate, and then we will come back to you and discuss with you. And and the LTHS is just、um, tidying up that thought, so it should not come as a surprise to anybody. But If in fact some residents of certain estates still have、uh, doubts, we can certainly contact them. As for allocation, Miss Wong, let to mention one point. Well, the member made new proposals, but when you think about this matter, you have to be mindful of one point. It is not that we have units in all eighteen districts for offer. If、uh, there are, then what you say is possible. But the fact is, at any one time, I may only have units in some districts, and we are in a quandary. If we say we offer units in Kowloon and then in Hong Kong, if the applicant thinks it is acceptable, say we we go for Hong Kong Island, but then there are no no units in Hong Kong Island, and then if the applicant is willing to accept a unit in Kowloon, then at least he or she will be able to exercise. His uh, th- uh, right to choose, but if someone insists on Hong Kong Island, then that person may have to wait for very long. Therefore, it is a matter of supply. It is not that we have units in all the districts at any one time. Okay,、uh, I like to mention, Mr. Yang, you repeated many times that you are not going to conduct any large-scale redevelopment project, but you can consider redeveloping individual. As states, I need a a written reply from you on that, because members have mentioned Kuaishing West. I'd like you to give us a written reply as to why Kuaishing West is different from Wafu. Why is it that you can redevelop Wafu, but not Kuaishing West? What conditions does Kuaishing West lack so that you do not consider redeveloping it? Can you give us a written reply? Certainly. Okay, that's the end of the meeting today. We thank deputations and individuals for coming, and we thank members for coming. Thank you very much, and also the officials. Meeting adjourned.